And now for more details about the DPRK parade, let's cross live to Tony Chun, who has been covering in Pyongyang for this event. Well, Tony, we know that you've been at the King Kim uh, Il-sung uh, Square in the morning to witness the military parade. What is the highlight this morning, especially? Is there any new weaponry displays and hardware? Well, it was an amazing spectacle. Uh, it lasted for about two and a half hours. And it was incredibly choreographed. It opened with uh, marching uh, soldiers uh, going across the square, waves and waves, uh, different uniforms representing all of the uh, elements of the armed forces, men and women alike. Uh, it was meticulously done to see them uh, marching so carefully in such a choreographed display. And then we saw uh, the heavy weaponry come out. Uh, again, wave upon wave, trucks carrying missiles, uh, artillery weapons, uh, heavy machine guns. It was really a, a very strong display of, of military might, uh, much as we've seen in the past uh, here in the DPRK. But I think this is on a larger scale. We were hearing uh, that this is the, the largest one in their history, uh, and that uh, it was quite phenomenal. And then, as you heard, uh, towards the end, uh, Chairman Kim Jong-il came out. He'd been watching with the top leadership of the Workers' Party of Korea from the balcony, but he went around the top of the balcony, waving to the crowds who'd converged by this stage right up to the steps uh, of the pavilion in which he was sitting. And it was a very emotional moment. Uh, people, I think, displaying a lot of nationalist fervor, a, a lot of tears we saw. So I think very genuine emotion amongst the crowd as they cheered their leader. As we understand, uh, the DPRK has the largest armed services in, in this world. What is the uh, military's morale while doing this parade, and what do the people say about their performances? Well, we've seen a, a new wave of leadership of the military commission. I think uh, many people see that as very significant for the wider leadership of the DPRK. Um, and again, I think people are very proud of their military forces. Uh, although the display in uh, Kim Il-sung Square finished uh, about an hour ago, that parade has been going around the streets of Pyongyang. And, and until a couple of minutes ago, I could still hear cheering coming from all around the city. So I think people are very proud of, of their armed forces uh, displaying that today. Uh, and indeed, that has been showed around the world. There's an unprecedented number of foreign journalists here in Pyongyang to cover this event. Uh, so I think people are very keen to show the world as well uh, how proud they are uh, with the eyes of the world watching Pyongyang. Yes, as you mentioned, there are a group of international journalists who are being invited to witness uh, this parade. Uh, what is the security situation in Pyongyang uh, to ensure that the military parade will go on smoothly? The well, security has naturally been very tight. Um, plans of, of the day's uh, events have been kept relatively guarded, as they would be anywhere else in the world, I suppose. Um, it's quite difficult to work out exactly what's going on sometimes. Uh, we think there's going to be more festivities, civilian ones, this evening. Um, but as you mentioned, a, a very large number of journalists, two plane loads who arrived yesterday, I think. Uh, the international media was not expecting the kind of access they've got uh, and we've been welcomed very warmly. Uh, our restrictions are quite limited, I think in part because the organization of today's celebrations are phenomenally complicated. So having journalists wandering around the city is quite, uh, quite a problem, but uh, for the most part very welcoming. I think people uh, welcoming us here to Pyongyang and, and saying how pleased they are to see us. And do you have chances to talk with the military, or government, or even civilians in Pyongyang? Uh, there was the opportunity at the end of the parade to speak to a few people. Uh, and again, they were expressing their pride in the country, uh, their love for, for Chairman Kim Jong-il. Again, I think uh, an opportunity for them to display uh, their love for the country. Uh, again, one imagines these, uh, given that, that they're participating in the event, uh, they are particularly displaying a national fervor. Uh, nonetheless, I think it's a, it's a very nice atmosphere in Pyongyang, uh, an atmosphere of celebration. Although we've seen uh, the principal focus on the military this morning, we understand there's going to be a civilian event this evening, one would imagine, uh, more choreographed dancing and the like that North Korea does so well. So uh, it, it is very much a party atmosphere. Uh, I understand it's a very highly choreographed event, even for journalists like you, but you've been there uh, uh, before. What is the difference uh, between uh, DPRK now and three years ago when you visited last time? Indeed, I came last time in 2005 when... Uh,
international sanctions against the DPRK were obviously having a very severe effect, very little traffic on the streets, uh, and in the evenings uh, virtually no electricity at all. Um, when we arrived yesterday evening, it, the difference was quite marked. We came in on a different road, obviously one that had been recently built. There was quite a lot of traffic on the streets, uh, and there were lights uh, in, in pretty much all of the buildings uh, leading from the airport into the city centre. Uh, so I think uh, things, the situation has alleviated somewhat. Uh, again, of course, I think there's been a lot of effort being put into the preparations for these 60, 65th anniversary celebrations. So I think the government very keen to make sure that these go well. Uh, but uh, certainly, compared to my experiences in the past, Pyongyang, Pyongyang seems to be slightly more relaxed. More relaxed Pyongyang. Thank you, Tony, for your update. Thanks so much.